Hi everyone, I'm Joe Mazzalotti, and this is how to add tabs to your Hotwire native app. We'll work through iOS first, and then pick up Android. So what we have here is the demo Rails app that we're going to be working with. It's a blog. We have blog posts. We can add posts. And then each one of these posts also has comments on it. So up here we have two different navigation items in our navigation dropdown, one for the posts index page and one for the comments. So we'll be creating a tab on iOS and then on Android for each of these links, posts and then comments. For iOS, we're gonna open up Xcode and create a new project. File, new, project. From there, we'll select the iOS app and click next. And here we're gonna call it blog. Make sure no team is selected, make sure your storyboard interface and Swift language and click next. I'm going to drop this right on my desktop and hit create. From here, we're going to only talk about one file, scene delegate. But before we do that, we're going to add our package dependencies to add Hotwire native to the app. So file add package dependencies. Up here, we're going to type in github.com slash hotwired with a D and then hotwire native iOS. We're going to change this to up to next minor version here and set it to 1.2.0. Hotwire native is still introducing breaking changes with every 0.1 release. So up to next minor will keep you safe. Add package, add package again. And we see that we have our hotwire native dependency over here on the left. So in scene delegate, we're going to delete the comments up at the top. Delete some empty space. We're going to get rid of everything except this one function. Scene will connect to options. This is what happens when the app launches, and anything in here is where we start to customize. So, first, we're going to import Hotwire Native. And then we're going to create a reference to a tab bar controller. We'll use the Hotwire tab bar controller that we get from Hotwire Native, which helps manage our stack a little bit easier. And then when the app launches, we're gonna set the Windows root, root controller to our tab bar controller to make sure we can see it. And then we're going to tell the tab bar controller to load hotwire tab.all. Now, if we try to build that, hotwire tab all does not exist. Hotwire tab is part of Hotwire Native, but we can extend that with an extension and create a static constant called all and return an array of tabs. So here we'll create a hotwire tab and these each take in a title. So we'll have a title for posts. I'm gonna format this a little bit easier to see. We'll have an image of a system image here. We're gonna use the system image called book pages. We're getting these from SF symbols. And then the URL is we're gonna take our base URL and append a path to it called posts. We don't have a base URL yet. If we try to build, it can't find it. So we're going to just create one up here up at the top. Let base URL equals URL string localhost 3000 and force unwrap that. So if we now, uh, pending path. If we try to build this, we will have our single tab here just with the one posts. But let's add a second one for comments. And here for comments, we'll use the bubble image and append the comments path. That'll get us to the comments index page. And then we can command R to run this. We get our app. Here we'll show the comparison here. So we have our post screen down here with our posts tab. And then if we switch over to the comments page, we have our comments tab. Each one of these is a fully managed stack, so we can navigate deeper into one of these on the first, and we don't mess up anything on the second. So with just a few lines of code, we can add our tabs to a Hotwire native iOS app. Up next, we'll take a look at Android. Okay, so for Android, we're gonna to wanna to create file, new project, and then select empty views activity, not empty activity. Click next. We're gonna also gonna call this one blog. We're gonna put it on the desktop as the in the blog location. But we already have one, so we're gonna name it 
on it at desktop blog Android. Click finish to create the project. Android Studio will then sync Gradle, get all of our files in line. Everything yellow here means it's kind of still working on stuff right now. So let's give it a second for Gradle to sync. And once it does, this will automatically switch over to the Android view like it just did and we're good to go. So we're gonna be touching three files, here, four files here actually. The first one is we're gonna open up Gradle scripts under the app module. Scroll down to the bottom and add the implementation for Hotwire native Android. So implementation, uh, dev.hotwire core 1.2.0 and then dev hotwire navigation fragments. And then we're gonna get complaining from Android Studio that we have to sync Gradle. So we'll click sync now. This will install hotwire native and the dependencies we need to use it. So that's all done. We're gonna open up activity main, which is the main layout of our application file or of our application, what it looks like when it launches and switch over to the code view. And here we have a constraint layout holding a single text view with hello world. We're gonna get rid of that and create our bottom navigation view, which is what Android uses as the bottom navigation kind of tab bar. So the width will match the parent, want it to fill the width of the screen and the height, we're going to have it wrap content. That essentially says, hey, take up as much space as you need, but no more. Always a good idea to give it an ID. We'll call this bottom nav to make sure we can reference it later. And then we're going to say that we want to align the beginning of it, the left side, so start or of it to the start of the parent. And the same thing for the end, that's gonna push us to fill the width of, or to bind us the left and right side of the screen. And then also bottom, bottom. Command option L here to sort those for us and rearrange our code so it looks the same always. We now have our bottom navigation view. We're gonna to wanna to add two web views, one for each tab. Each of those comes from a, a, a fragment container view. These are views that can hold on to fragments, UI view controllers on iOS or controller slash views on Rails. Uh, the width here is gonna match the parent and the height here, we're gonna actually give it a height of zero. Zero means that we're gonna constrain it and let it fill its height, the rest of, let its height fill the rest of the screen. So to do that, we're gonna say that the top of this matches the top of the parent. So bind the top to the top, but the bottom is gonna to bind to the top of the bottom nav. So now we have this filling the screen between the top of the screen and the top of the nav bottom navigation view our tab bar. Let's give it an ID of uh, navigator or um, this is going to be the posts navigator host sort those and then the last one we need for this is a name this essentially says what fragment are you actually containing here so we'll grab dev hotwire uh, navigation navigator and then grab a navigator host so this is saying grab the navigator host fragment and pop it inside here from hotwire native Create a second one of those by copying and pasting and just renaming posts to comments. So now we have, we can look at the preview here, our tab bar at the bottom or bottom navigation view, and then two fragment containers that are kind of just on top of each other right now. And Hotwire Native will make sure to show and hide those when each one is selected. So to do that, we're gonna open up main activity. This is what happens when the app gets launched. We have this same on create kind of like over on iOS. But the first thing we'll do is change app compat activity to hotwire activity. This gives us access to all of the good stuff like navigator and setting up our views and all the stuff that we need to actually make it a hotwire native app. We are running into a problem here because we haven't implemented the other required function, which is navigator configurations, which returns a list of navigator configurations. I'll just leave that as not implemented right now. We'll get to that in a second. So let's get rid of all of this code where we're actually applying window insets because of the edge to edge layout. And we're gonna instead grab our view, um, r.id.main, which is the main outer container view and apply our default window insets. A little helper from Hotwire Native that just did everything we had there, but in one line. And then finally, we're going to initialize the uh, bottom, bottom view bottom uh, navigation view. 
So we're gonna add that private function here. Gonna put that beneath here. And in here, we're gonna to wanna to grab a reference to uh, late init var uh, tab bar controller. And that's going to be a hotwire tab bottom navigation controller. And the bottom navigation controller needs to be initialized with our bottom navigation view. So we'll grab our bottom navigation view, which does the same thing as we did before, find view by ID. It's a bottom navigation view, but we named it r.id bottom nav. And then we can initialize our bottom navigation controller with a reference to this and our bottom navigation view. So we now have initialized our bottom navigation view. We only need to do one more thing to get that working, and that is to tell the bottom navigation controller to load our tabs. And we're gonna load here main tabs and just start on index zero, load the first tab. So to get those main tabs, we're gonna wanna create a uh, constant out here, a const uh, a val here called main tabs, and it's going to return a list of tabs. So we're gonna have our posts tab and our comments tab. Those don't exist yet, so let's create those. And we're gonna do very similar to what we do on iOS. We're gonna create a hotwire bottom tab here. And that creates or requires three different variables or three different parameters, title, icon, res ID, and configuration. Title is for posts, is gonna be posts, it's the title of the tab. We'll skip icon res ID for a sec and we'll create a configuration. And this is a navigator configuration. And this also creates or requires three arguments, name, just to distinguish it from the other ones, uh, start location, and then navigator host ID. Navigator host ID is our posts navigator host that we added from activity main earlier. So I'll pull this over on the side here just to make sure we reference it correctly. So posts navigator hosts, you can see we have that right there. Uh, start location, we need one of those URLs, right? So we're gonna do a const val base URL and that is going to be http colon slash slash 10.0.2.23000. That creates a round trip back to our Mac. We didn't need to do that on iOS, but the Android emulator behaves a slightly differently. So this will essentially be localhost on our Mac. And then down here, our start location will be base URL slash posts. Probably looks pretty similar to a Ruby interpolated string there. Okay, for the icon res, we're gonna create a new icon. So file, new, image, asset. And we're gonna change this to action bar and tab icons and create a posts icon. We're gonna grab clip art. And for the clip art, we're gonna use the article clip art and click okay and click next and then finish. And you'll notice that when we use this r.drawable slash posts, we got our little icon off to the left it shows that it's all wired up and a reference to it. Last thing we have to do is copy and paste this to create our comments tab. And we'll do the same thing here. Comments, r.drawable.comments, the comments of the navigator, base URL slash comments, and then the comments navigator host. Now we don't have a comments icon, so we need to add one of those. We'll call it comments like before, or like we did earlier. And then we can use the comment clip art and click finish there, and then this will pop in. So everything is set up and ready to go, but we need to do one more thing in this file to make sure that we implement our navigator configurations. And luckily for us, we can actually iterate over main tabs and just grab navigator configurations, a helper extension from Hotwire Native that iterates through all of these and grabs configuration for us. To make sure we can actually access the internet, we're gonna just add the uses permission internet over here, and then we're not accessing HTTPS, just HTTP, so we'll wanna do uses clear text traffic and set that to true. Okay, 
We can now run our Android app once the emulator launches. We will be able to see our website. Here we have, just like on iOS, our posts tab and also our comments tab. Everything works pretty much the same as it would appear on iOS. We can click into one of these and these two navigation stacks are separate. So that was how to add tabs to your Hotwire native iOS and Android app. iOS was pretty quick, only one line, only one file of code, like I think 30 lines. Uh, Android require a little bit more configuration, but that's usually the way it is with Android. If you're looking for more information on Hotwire Native or how to build great mobile apps powered by your Rails server, check out my blog, mazalotti.com. There'll be a link right in the first comment. Thanks.